If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what is the scariest, weirdest, paranormal thing or entity you've ever witnessed that you still think about to this day? Me, my brother, and a friend were camping once when I was maybe 11 or 12 miles out on our 100-acre farm in a small town in Kentucky. I woke up around 1.30 or so in the morning and could faintly hear a piano being played that sounded like it was coming out of the woods about 100 yards from our campsite. There is not a house, building, or anything else anywhere near that spot on our farm. So naturally, I think I'm just hearing things and decide to try to go back to sleep. Then my brother, who was apparently also awake, sits up and asks me if I hear a piano. We made a dash for the house and never camped out there again. I was home alone, watching TV. I had it running through the stereo. Suddenly it starts getting louder. I look at the stereo, and the volume is counting up. I had it on 12. It's currently on 18, 19, and 20. Counting up at a steady pace. I think to myself, duck, I'm sitting on the remote. I raise my arse from side to side to find the remote, but it's not there. 33, 34, 35. The TV is now incredibly loud. I glance to my left just in time to see the remote drop from head height down onto the arm of the sofa. I was in the Boy Scouts when I was younger. In the summer of 97, we were on our way back from a campout. Our modest troop was in a 15-passenger van with a U-Haul tow behind the trailer. I was in the middle seat, sitting up on my knees, talking to the person sitting behind me, my cousin, when all of a sudden he just fell asleep, as well as the two kids sitting next to him. I looked down at the kid sitting next to me, and he was also asleep. Then the van was upside down, and I was thrown to the ceiling. It was right side up again, and I was slammed back into the seat. And lastly, it was upside down again, and this time it hit hard. I had glass in my mouth and felt like every bone in my body was broken, but I sat up after a minute and watched someone crawl out through the window, so I followed them. When I got out, I was in ankle deep water. We had landed in a ditch at the base of a hill that the road was on. I couldn't see the person I had followed out of the wreckage. I climbed the hill, losing my shoe in the process, and stood in 70 mile per hour traffic with two cars slammed on their brakes to avoid me. A woman stepped out of the first car and was screaming her head off at me before she realized I was all torn up and there was a van in the ditch. She immediately ran back to her car and pulled out a car phone. Later at the hospital, numerous doctors and nurses asked me to repeat this story over and over and over again. I had to tell this story. It wasn't until later that I found out everyone else was trapped in the van with broken bones, and one kid died. I was the only person who escaped my own power, and I didn't have a scratch on me. I still don't know who or what it was I followed out of the broken window. It was March 26, 1997. We remember the date because it turned out to be the day the Heaven's Gate cult committed mass suicide. My friend and I took a class together at a local community college, so she would come to my house at 6 p.m., hang around for a few minutes, and we'd head off to our 6.30 p.m. class. She gets to my house at 6. We watched The Simpsons until the first commercial break, as we always did, around 6.10. We leave the house, both of us remembering seeing the dashboard clock in her car showing the correct time. It was about a 15-minute drive to the school. We get to school around 6.25. I hang around for a minute with a friend who's having a smoke outside, then head in. We sit down in a fairly empty room. The clock in the classroom says 6.10, but we assume it's wrong. My friend's watch says it's nearly 6.30, as we'd expect it to be. We wait. Eventually, people start trickling in, and class starts 20 minutes later. We're wondering what the hell is going on. My friend checked her watch a little while later in class, and it is now showing the same time as the classroom clock. Once class was over, the dashboard clock in her car was the same as her watch. We have no idea what happened, and we have not really heard a good explanation from others as to how we appeared to get out of sync with everyone else. A little background, it gets so cold here in North Dakota that our dorms are connected by tunnels so that in the winter we don't have to walk as far in the stifling cold, we can just walk through a network of heated tunnels. Anyway, my stepdad went to the same university that I'm attending now. He says that on some nights he would have to work the graveyard shift at the service help desk. At about 1 a.m. on a cold, lonely evening during finals week, a couple of students come stumbling through the doors. My stepdad briefly acknowledges them, and the students continue to walk in the direction of the tunnels. A minute later, they come running out, screaming, Dude. Dude. You've got to come quick. There's some girl in the tunnel with no legs. My dad has no idea what to think, but he follows these guys to the tunnels. Sure enough, there's a girl staring off into space. She had no legs, she was floating there. 
she disappeared after about a minute. My stepdad loves telling that story. There's a very well-known report at my school of a girl who was walking back to her dorm, slipped on some ice, broke her leg, and froze to death six feet from the entrance of her dorm, this was before the tunnels were built, around 1968 or 69, I think? My boyfriend lived in the dorm that the girl supposedly lived in, and I always hated walking back to his dorm at like 2 in the morning. I was afraid she would pop out of nowhere. When I was 12 or so, my family went camping at a campground in the Shenandoah Valley. Not in the middle of nowhere, but kind of an isolated mountain town. I went to take our dog for a walk out on a trail at the edge of the campground, with some pretty dense woods all around. My dog suddenly froze and wouldn't budge, right as I heard some rustling in the woods behind me. I spun around to see some random, middle-aged guy emerge from the trees and begin to approach me. I was too surprised to really react, and my dog was super old at that point, so he didn't do much other than freeze. Then the guy goes, hey, this is going to seem like a weird question, but could you come back to my cabin and help me cut my hair? I can't see the back of my neck and could really use your help. I quickly said something like, no, sorry, my parents are waiting on me for dinner, so I should get going. He just shrugged and walked back into the woods. I made it back to our campsite safely and told my parents. I had thought maybe he was a campground employee, but only after my parents' reaction did I realize how weird the interaction was. They immediately went to the campground staff and told them what happened. They searched the campground but never found the guy. I still get goosebumps thinking about it. I was about 13 years old, it was mid-June, around the 21st, longest day of the year. I was outside with my gang of bike friends from the neighborhood, and the sun was almost set, about, 45 pm there was a deep orange glow under the clouds out west from the sunlight, and as I looked at it, I suddenly saw a triangular formation of about 13 lights appear. They stayed in the position for a while until the sun had set, but the glow was still present. Suddenly, they all darted directly south. They went from a perfect standstill to moving like a bullet. I watched them travel south for about 10 seconds, and they were nearly out of visible range at that time but still just as bright. Suddenly, before they even got close to going beyond the horizon, they darted straight up without slowing down to make the transition, just an instant 90 degrees turn. Then they were gone behind the clouds. I asked if my buddies saw that, and they all said yes. We were all freaked out and in awe, but we only spoke about it one other time as a group. I asked my parents that night about what I saw, and they were confused because no man they knew of was capable of anything like that. It still makes me wonder to this day, aliens? UFOs? Shortly after my dad died, I saw something that I can't explain, but it scared me to the depths of my soul. I'm not sure if it was a dream or an apparition. I was 27 at the time. In my bedroom, early one morning, I was laying in bed. I was not fully asleep, I was just kind of drowsing. My then husband had only gotten home from work a short while before and had not yet come to bed. I was facing the window with the morning sunlight coming through the blinds. Suddenly, at the foot of the bed, stood a black hooded figure. The feeling I got was that it radiated pure hate and evil. It started to walk around the bed to come towards me. As it rounded the corner, I began to scream, get away from me. Over and over. I moved as far away from it as I could, and my back was pressed against the headboard. My husband came running into the room because of my screaming. As soon as he arrived, the figure disappeared. I was hysterical, shaking, and crying. It took me a long time to calm down. To this day, I remember it vividly, it happened in 1993, and I'm still not sure what I saw. The fact that it happened just a few days after my dad's death makes it even weirder to me. But it was scary, and I hope never to see anything like that again. A few years ago, I was driving on the freeway. I was alone in the car, and it was a beautiful sunny summer day with clear blue skies and no clouds. There was a semi in the lane in front of me and a red car behind me. I looked down for a split second to adjust the volume on the stereo, and when I looked up, a thick fog had come out of nowhere, and the semi was on its side, sliding towards me so fast I knew there was no way I was going to avoid it. I cannot adequately describe my feelings in that moment. Absolute terror, but also this overwhelming grief over the fact that I wouldn't be there as my daughter grew up. I opened my mouth to scream or gasp and must have blinked because suddenly everything was back to normal. The semi was upright and driving normally, there was no fog, and the red car was still behind me. I was not drunk, high, tired, medicated, or in an unhealthy emotional state. I have never hallucinated. I don't know how to explain it, but I do not drive behind semis anymore. Time stop, two times as a child. First, when my brother was kicking a ball high and it was descending, 
I was first going to catch it, but then decided to crouch down to not get the ball to my face. As I was down and crouched, the falling of the ball took two to three seconds more than it should have taken. I remember thinking, what, did it miss me? And then it stomped to my back. The second time, I was playing football again, this time at school. The game was on and furious. A ball was flying towards me. At least three kids got crowded next to each other, fighting to catch the falling ball. One guy lifted his leg and his foot touched the ball, and suddenly, time stopped just when he touched the ball. It was shorter than the previous but very noticeable period, perhaps a second or 1.5. Then the ball ricocheted from the foot, and the game continued. How come I wasn't affected? It still bugs me to this day. I live in North Carolina and have neighbors across me and to my sides, with a pasture of horses to the left and woods in the back. It's 2015 to 2016, and I'm going to take my dog out in the back near the start of my woods. It's snowing now as it is around Christmas time, much like it is present day. I was around 12 or 11 at the time, so when I started to hear wind chimes or music box like sounds coming from the woods, I panicked a little bit and brought my dog into the house. Later, I told my uncle and grandma, who didn't seem to believe me, but at the time, reports of clowns luring kids in the woods started to appear in the news in South Carolina, yes, this was a real thing and a real panic here, so maybe they would cut me some slack. This was not the case, and they did not seem to believe me. My uncle, however, said there was an old house back there across from our property line, so he said maybe it was them. But it wasn't that kind of music, and he didn't believe me when I said what it sounded like. Fast forward to now, December 3rd, 2021. It's around Christmas time again. I'm now 17, my uncle's recently passed away. I've moved into the house with my mother and stepdad. However, it's not snowing currently, and I have yet to really go back there, so I have not heard it again. After hearing something knock and walk around outside, separated in time by maybe an hour, I finally looked up my experience and found that people have similar experiences around the same time, with the same sounds and similar settings. If it snows this season, I'm taking my dog out there to see if I hear it again. Hopefully, people believe me. Has anyone else had similar experiences? There is a trail, a park, and a wooded area right behind my house. Very close to it, there is also a playground, basketball court, etc. And it's a neighborhood park that often has a lot of people around, even at night, for the skate park and basketball court. I often walk from my backyard to the playground with my siblings or whenever we feel like fishing in the little swampy lake area. Just earlier, at like 9 p.m., I walked from my backyard with my little sister and my boyfriend to the playground. It was getting dark, and my boyfriend was still playing basketball with my cousins, who drove to the park and met us there, so my little sister and I decided to go back home ourselves since it was a short walk. We were walking our usual route, and the backyards of other homes are very visible to us. And so is ours, but it's a little farther away from the playground, and we are the only people who have a big, tall white fence, so you can't see over our yard. Anyway, we walk closer, but before we could get that far, I suddenly felt the instinct to look at something. I stop walking our usual route and turn my head slightly to the right to see a tall white figure, at this point, it's light enough outside to see something far, but too dark to see it that clearly, and the figure is like, not human, nor anything I have ever seen in my life. I tried hard to think of what it was, but I realized it looked like it was coming towards my sister and me. It was like 20 feet away? Thinking I was a little crazy, I asked my sister if she could see it and pointed at it. She said yes in fright, and I said, I think it's running at us. So we both ran back to the court where my cousins and boyfriend were, and we ran really fast because we were super scared. I will try my best to describe the figure or what I saw, but it's hard. It was like a really tall white stick, like, 10 feet tall. And it was waving in a weird way, like really fast, and I thought it might be a deer because we have seen one there before, but it was way too tall and weird, looking like an object, not a human figure. I am Christian, 21 and have never seen anything paranormal. But that weird thing my sister and I saw was just unexplainable and scary because we always use that route, and it's right behind our house. I was just wondering if others had seen something similar. My parents and others won't believe us, and even my sister is doubting what she really saw. We got too scared to walk back, and luckily my brother drove to the park, so we went with him in the car instead. The figure was not scary at first, it was just so confusing, and I was perplexed and trying to understand what it was, but then I feared for my sister and me as I saw it running or coming towards us slowly but surely. This happened probably 11 years ago. My boyfriend at the time and I were sitting on a rock, probably 10-ish feet off the ground, just talking and being dumb teenagers. So all of a sudden, we notice all the bug and bird sounds have stopped. 
It's completely silent, and all the hair on my body stands up. We looked at each other, like, are you experiencing this too? So, looking around with wide eyes, I see a pair of legs pointing at us, like the person is just standing there watching us. Now the tree branches are blocking anything higher than knees, so I can see knees, legs, and bare feet. I started hitting my boyfriend and pointing, and his eyes got huge. All of a sudden, the person? Turned and ran deeper into the trees. Cracking twigs and rustling leaves are included. We laugh nervously and start talking about leaving. Not two seconds later, we hear a horrendous cracking sound above us, and in our hyped up fear state, we straight up jump off this rock and hit the ground running. As we look back, a huge tree branch has crashed down right where we were sitting. We ran straight back to the car and demanded to know if our other friends had been messing with us. When we reached the car, we realized they were in no state to have done any of that, insert I roll at teenage hormones. We told them to get dressed and drive us the hell out of there. Now I have no idea if it was a coincidence or something sinister, but it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced in the woods. And I ended up with a sprained ankle from my flying leap off the rock. Overall, not a good experience, lol. I'm not an outdoorsman, but I spent many hours in the local forest as a teen and young adult. One time I heard people coming, so I ducked into a side path. Three guys, aged 20 or so, walked by, carrying all kinds of stuff. I heard one say, how are we going to get the goat here? I thought it was odd. Maybe I heard it wrong. I followed them to find that they were building something. I went back the next day when they weren't there to see it. It was a ritual place. They had a giant vintage bird cage. There was a bell hanging from the tree that, upon closer inspection, had feathers stuck to it with what was probably blood. I can only presume that the bell was on an actual and probably unfortunate bird at some point. There were also rocks with sigils painted on them. And other bizarre witchy things on the trees. Showed other people who destroyed it. I have no doubt they planned something. This happened last night. Firstly, I couldn't sleep. I was laying wide awake scrolling on TikTok when a tarot reading came up, and it resonated a lot with me, so I began watching a longer version of it. After a while, I suddenly felt extremely uneasy, so I decided to try to sleep. The second the clock hit 3 AM, a lightning bolt of terror shot throughout my body, from head to toe. It felt like something entered my body, and as soon as that thing had traveled from my feet, my whole room creaked, into the house is settling kind of way. It then sounded like small knocks, almost like footsteps in my room. As a way of trying to calm myself down, I once again used my phone and put on some ASMR. After some time passed, the temperature in the room noticeably dropped. I went from sweating to freezing. I then tried to sleep again. I was lying on my stomach, and my thoughts wandered away, and the name Adam was spoken over and over, and then, suddenly, it just said Eve, and once that name entered my mind, it felt like someone was pushing my head down towards my pillow and my body towards the mattress. I felt a pulsating feeling at the back of my head, and in the pulses, I heard the banging of metal being hit on metal over and over, and a voice in my voice said, Eve, Eve, Eve. And this, my name, is Healing. I then tried to open my eyes, but I couldn't move, and I knew it could be sleep paralysis, so I tried to wiggle my toes and fingers to snap out of it. But when I did and started trying to sit up, I was almost jolted back into that state of hearing banging and someone pushing me down. Eventually, I got out of it and couldn't really sleep anymore because I was so terrified. The way I was pushed down felt almost like a magnet pulling me to the ground. I don't know what happened. It was probably nothing. It's just that a few days ago I dreamt that I was being chased by a demon, and I'm not excited to go to sleep tonight. Does anyone have any theories on what this could be? The other day, I was in the backyard with my cat, I have to be out there so she doesn't escape her harness and take off, and I was in the garden, looking for cucumbers and squashes to bring inside. Really the only thing I'm scared of out there are wasps, but then I see this figure behind me, and I thought it was my brother trying to come up behind me and scare me, and when I turned around to confront him, I saw no one there. Going about my business, I bring whatever I picked inside the house, and I head back out. Nothing else happens when I'm out there. After a bit, I head in when my cat wants to go in, and not long after that, my mom, grandma, and brothers head out to go walk the dog, and my other brother left to be with friends, so it was just my cat and me home alone. I was cleaning and baking, and as I set something in the living room, I turned and saw the black figure again, but in full view. It's just a little shorter than I am, it's full black, and in the middle of its face is this weird red mark. As soon as I see it, it's gone. When the others got back, I told my mom about it, and she doesn't have any idea what it could be. The next day, 
It's just my grandma and brother at home since my mom went to work, my brothers are at school, and my other brother is downstairs. I was making something in the kitchen, and I saw that same figure again, still standing really close to me. At first, I wasn't scared of it since it caught me off guard, but now that it's not leaving me alone, I'm starting to get freaked out about it. Cut to last night, and everyone's heading off to bed, the animals are already fast asleep, and I'm the only one that's still walking around fully awake. It was close to 2 AM, and I headed out to the kitchen to grab something to drink and to use the bathroom, when all of a sudden, I felt like something was behind me. The only light that I put on was the bathroom one, and that was down the hall, so it was dark where I was standing in the kitchen. On instinct, I opened the fridge so the light inside would come on, and when I turned, that figure was standing there. I forgot about my drink, I walked fast to my room so I didn't wake anyone up by running, I turned the bathroom light off as I passed, and I didn't come out of my room after that. In all honesty, I'm not sure what this thing is, why it's following me, or how it started to follow me. The first time I saw it was in the garden a couple days ago, and ever since then, it's been popping up at odd times here and there, just standing really close to me and not doing anything else. I'm having very strange things happen to me lately that are starting to legit scare me now. I live on a farm in the middle of SC, USA, and I am a cigarette smoker, so I go outside at random times at night, and I usually am okay with the usual sounds, but every once in a while I hear something strange, but I brush it off. Lately, within the past month, it's gotten a hell of a lot worse. They'll be sitting on the porch, and I can hear voices of people talking, which sound very close, which is unnerving to say the least. Last night was the worst. The voices started sounding like people I know who do not live anywhere near me. Other parts of the country or in a different country. Well, the other night, it sounded like someone approaching me from my right, and it kept getting closer until I stood up, pulled my pocket knife out, and went to the stairs on the porch, and as I did that, whatever it was, it ran. It sounded like two feet of running. But last night it got super cold, like at the end of the porch, and I heard very scary breathing, so I went inside. I got curious at this point and video chatted with my girlfriend. I went back out, and we were listening, and I swear, what I heard I had never heard around here. I heard a little kid singing, which turned into an adult laughing, and then, after like two minutes of wailing, he moved slowly into the woods. She didn't hear it. I don't know if I'm being messed with by people or something more serious. I have a ton of more things that I can't explain if anyone wants to hear about them. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. I'm almost to the point of getting in my car, leaving, and never coming back. Also, I forgot to add that there is a cemetery at the end of our yard, which I believe has two children and two adults, judging by the size of the tombstones. They are really old. I don't know if that means anything. I still can't explain what the hell this was. I was 12, it was sometime in October 2002. I played softball as a kid, which dragged on from the summers into the fall. Oftentimes, my softball games were in Newburgh, an hour-long drive from Portland, my hometown. My dad would often drive me at 7 a.m. in order to make it on time. We always drove down to Wilsonville and then took Wilsonville Road to Newburgh to beat traffic. One morning we were driving along the road, an extremely familiar path at this point, and emerged through a grove of trees or forest into fields and orchards. It was 7.40 a.m. or so, an overcast day, and a chilly morning. There weren't any cars on the road but ours. At the edge of the grove, my dad and I saw a man cross the road from right to left and step out into our lane. He was dressed in jeans and a red flannel shirt. He looked like a farmer. Dad slammed on the brakes, and I threw my hands on the dash, lowering my head in preparation for the hit. When I looked up a fraction of a second later, there was no one in the road. My dad had this blank look on his face and didn't say a damn word about it, even though he stopped the car. We sat there on the road for a minute or two, looking for this person, before he drove off. We didn't hit anybody. There was no one there. I asked what had happened, but he said nothing for the rest of the trip. I know there's no way a person could have run off the road on either side. To the right was a steep uphill embankment that led to a shallower hill. It was a bit of a climb to get up there, we would have seen his scramble. To the left was a steep, downhill embankment leading to a couple houses and covered in thick ivy and ferns. The person would have had to run across the road and somehow shimmy down the bluff all in half a second. There's no way. I asked my dad about it today, and he said it was a tree stump. Yeah, dad, I can't explain it either. Okay, so I lived next door to my great-grandfather from 1990, when I was born, until he died in 2006. His wife, Doreen, had died three years prior to my birth, so I never met her, but I'd seen plenty of photos of her and heard stories from other family members. 
One day when I was about five or six, me and my older brother were playing in my great grandfather's back garden, something we did a lot, when we both looked up to his bedroom window and saw Nana Doreen smiling and waving at us. We both just stood there, shocked, and I don't remember waving back at her or seeing her disappear. I just remember us running into the house and telling our mom, Nan, Grandad, and Great Grandad what we'd seen. The bedroom she was waving from was the one she died in. She'd had breast cancer and wanted to stay at home with family because she didn't have a lot of time left. The weirdest thing, though, was her color. The closest I can come to describing it is the color of the ghosts in Blythe Spirit, 1945. A sort of greenish color. I only saw that movie years later, and I immediately thought of my encounter. I've had other experiences and heard a lot of creepy stories from family throughout the years, but that was the one that stands out in my life. When I was a teenager, my best friend and I noticed that whatever room we were in would get, foggy when we would have particular discussions. One night, we decided to deliberately call up whatever was hanging around. We began our discussion on topics known to have the desired effect. We held this little session out on the front lawn of my friend's house. Shortly, we spotted a cloud of fog far away across the valley. Abruptly, the fog was standing like a wall mere feet away from us. Look at this, I said, pointing at the ground. You can see where it terminates in the grass. Then it swept over the both of us. My neck seized up, and I couldn't move or speak. I sat there helpless, wondering why my friend wasn't saying anything more. I started to panic because it felt like I was being drained and beginning to forget who I was. And just like that, it was gone. We were both stone cold sober during this little visit. The strangest thing about the whole experience to me was that immediately afterward, me and my friend skulked back into the house and instinctively never spoke of it again. A response to the curious, the subjects we spoke of that seemed to cause these visitations were garden variety teenage science fiction nerd stuff, alternate dimensions and such. You know, the sort of subject matter that immediately lessens your credibility and makes everyone assume you are high. I have had a couple of other odd experiences in my time, but those occurred to me alone and can be dismissed as subjective hallucinations. One experience that puzzled me for years I was finally able to identify as a migraine halo. This particular experience was frightening and I chose not to mess with whatever it was. I did see this characteristic fog again, and I stayed the hell away from it. It was not evil or demonic, it was just indifferent and powerful. It checked us out and left. I cannot begin to say what the hell it was. For the record, I am science-minded and do not believe in ghosts or the afterlife. But I also believe that human science presents an extremely limited picture of the world we live in, so let's not jump to conclusions. Heaps of weird crap have been happening to me lately. If anyone can offer an explanation for the stuff happening, I'd be happy to hear it. Weird stuff has happened to me all my life. I have heaps of stories. I am a fairly spiritual person, however, my family is not. So it makes for good holy crap, did you just see that? And no, you're not seeing things conversations. About a month ago, I was showering. When I got out, I went to wipe the steam or whatever off the mirror and realized there was a weird ass smiley face drawn on the mirror. It's a floor to roof length mirror and it was about 6.5 feet up the mirror. I live with my mom, and we're both 5.2 feet. I suppose it was possible for mom to draw it, but I can't imagine why she would. This was at like 3.30 in the morning too. So extra creepy. I also keep having this recurring nightmare. I used to have the same dream when I was a kid. Long explanation short, the dream is me stuck in a burning building. I can hear the helicopter and someone yelling, all right, that's everyone, let's go, and I just kind of stand there screaming. Every time I have this dream, I wake up with a bruise on my left upper arm. It kind of looks like the shape of a five-pointed star. It lasts a couple days, then it's gone. It's gone for a day, then I have the dream again, and it's back. I have photos, I just have no idea how to upload them. I knew. Every night, as I'm about to fall asleep, I feel like I'm getting poked in the back of my thighs. I will say that I have nerve system issues, so that may be an explanation for that. It feels like three lots of three pokes in a line going down my leg. No matter if I'm on my back, side, or tummy. There's other little things, like tapping on my window. Weird smells, kind of like a coppery smell coming out of my air conditioner at random times. Sometimes I feel watched, or I just get a gut feeling that I'm not safe, I do live in a relatively bad neighborhood, so I'm always scared. I've had heaps of experience with many different things. It's been different lately, though. Everyone thinks I'm imagining it all. I used to be quite fond of drugs, but I'm a little over two years clean, so I can't imagine there's still drug juice flowing in me somewhere that might be triggering this. If anyone can think of an explanation or advice that would be mad, 
I'm starting to get pretty scared. So I was out for a walk, just wandering around with no specific goal, and I ended up at the old docks in the historical section of my city. I was walking along the piers, down past where the ships dock, and past the science museum when I saw the old warehouse that section of town is known for. We have a couple of old, circa 1900s, buildings in that section of town, including an old brewery in this warehouse. I've always wanted to explore it, so I walked along until I found a gate that had been left open. The place loomed up in front of me, old and forbidding but still not scary to me. I'm not afraid of human spirits haunting me, I'm pretty good at not being hunted by ghosts and this realm spooks. So I'm walking along beside this old warehouse, and suddenly the world's creepiest feeling starts to sneak up on me. I keep walking, thinking it's just me getting nervous about the cops finding me here, technically, I was trespassing. I get to the end of the strip, and it hits me, something is watching me. I look back over my shoulder, and nobody is there. I look back at the warehouse, and there most definitely is something there, something with old, heavy eyes and a mouth full of shadowy teeth about as long as my arm. I know this sounds insane, but I swear to any gods you may or may not believe in, it was there. I saw the eyes and the mouth, and for a split second, I saw the thing itself. It was ducking huge, almost as big as the warehouse, but sealed up inside its foundations. The eye looked right at me, and the thing smiled, its dark, gaping mouth full of pointed teeth gleaming in the shadows that surrounded it. It was only a split second, and I left immediately, trying to push all thoughts of that thing out of my mind, but it wouldn't leave me alone. It's like it followed me home, even though I know it's bound for the warehouse. I can't shake it, and something about it feels familiar. Anyway, I know it sounds insane, and I have no idea what to do about it. This happened to my uncle. On Christmas Eve 1994, he was riding his motorcycle with a friend on their way home from visiting my grandparents, who lived in a small village. It had rained like crazy the week before, the bridge on the main road had collapsed, so they had to take another route on a dirt road around the hill. They had been riding for a few minutes through the dark forest when suddenly something happened. My uncle hit the brake so abruptly that they almost fell. Hundreds of monkeys were emerging from the bushes a few meters in front of them, making their way to the other side of the dirt road beyond the tree line. My uncle waited patiently until the last monkey disappeared behind the bushes. Just as he was about to start the engine, another monkey walked out of the bushes. This one, my uncle said, was unbelievably huge. Dark grayish and as tall as an adult. It was bulky, and it limped a little as it moved. It was walking upright, very slowly, towards the bushes. And suddenly, it stopped in the middle of the road. It turned its head around to look at my uncle. He said he had never felt so scared in his life before. The gigantic monkey stood there, still staring into his soul. There was a flash of intimidation and wisdom in its eyes that only comes with old age. And he could see that this beast knew that they were in its territory. My uncle could feel his friend shaking violently behind him. After what felt like minutes, the staring contest was finally over when the beast walked into the bushes to join its troop. He waited for a few more minutes until he was convinced no more monkeys were showing up, and he caught them off guard before they took off. When they finally made their way out of the forest onto the main road, his friend went, what the hell was that? My uncle was sure that that huge monkey they had just seen was the leader of the troop. It was just trying to make sure that its troop made it to the other side of the forest safely. But what scared him the most was that it never blinked while staring at him. It still gives him chills whenever he thinks about the frightening encounter. I'm staying with a friend for a little while. This was at her house. My friend was asleep next to me, and I was awake and crying a little bit, enough for my throat to burn but not enough to wake my friend. It was around 1.30 am when the door to our room creaked open. I looked over and called out the name of her mom, thinking that she was coming in to check on us at night. Instead, I see the figure of a man clawing into the room with his hands and feet. It was like a really low bear crawl, keeping very close to the ground. Then the figure stands up. It was a very tall man who was entirely black with no face. We made eye contact for a solid second or two before it vanished before my eyes. I am a very spiritual person, but I have never experienced anything like this. I got a very bad vibe from the spirit and turned on a light in the hallway once I got my bearings again. I managed to fall asleep, and when I woke up, the first thing I did was cleanse the house and put up protection wards, banishing the spirit. I think the spirit wanted to feed off of my negative energy. I've been having a tough time lately, being in the midst of a very turbulent part of my life. I had been crying just before the spirit entered the room, and I cannot express how many bad vibes I got from the whole experience. I have some questions, like, why the hell did it crawl into the room? How did it manage to open the closed door? Where did it come from? 
I also wonder what the spirit's real intentions are and if they are coming for me or for my friend who is sleeping beside me. I'm not sure it was expected to be seen by me, seeing as how quickly it vanished when we made eye contact. Why did it crash? Why, of all the things you could do as a creepy spirit? This thing happened to me in the past when I was around 9, and I always used to hang out with my oldest cousin, he was 7 back then, as we were pretty separated at that time before everything changed when he turned 18. I was spending a night in my grandmother's house, as I used to be her personal dog sitter, and he decided to come hang out with me before he suggested a good idea to go into the nearest forest, which was almost next to her house. We were living in a medium-sized city, but the forest is almost always near buildings in some parts or areas, around 10 or 11 pm to just walk around the edge of the forest since it would be foolish to go deep into the forest that late. I nodded and told him that it would be a good idea since we were bored and feeling adventurous, so we headed out and just started to walk towards the edge of the forest, having a small adventure, but that didn't last even half an hour before the weird thing started to happen. I remember when I was standing against a big tree and looking just in front of me while my cousin was near my side, like 6 to 7 inches away from me, and seemed to be searching for something, which is still unclear exactly, but when I was looking in front of me, I saw red eyes staring at me out of nowhere, but they were far away from us. I turned towards my cousin and asked if he was seeing what I was seeing right now, but he just ignored my question, so I turned back to look at the eyes, and they were closer than before. I blinked a few times, but of course I couldn't see anything around them, and they were not getting closer. I only saw trees, and I turned back to him and asked the same question, but he kept ignoring me, so I turned one last time to look at them, just to see that they were even closer and closer. I just kept watching them, feeling a little bit afraid at this moment, and I swear that they started to come towards me even when I didn't look away, so I just grabbed his hand and just ran as quickly as I could with him until we saw the street lamps. After that, I have never seen or experienced the same thing again. Before I tell you the story, you should be familiar with one of the myths in my country, the Philippines, if you get lost and keep coming back at the exact same spot, take off your shirt and burn it. The story begins around the time I first started driving. I got into the habit of wandering around at night with no real destination in mind, just cruising. I was in the suburbs and decided to stop off for a smoke, I don't smoke in the car, when I noticed a group of three older men who were gathered around a small table sharing a local gin amongst themselves. As customary, they even offered me a shot, a swig. I took a few moments with these men and was laughing along at their stories when I noticed the time. It was about time to head back. Immediately, one of them said, Mama yaka na umalis. Don't leave yet, in a half kidding, half serious tone. They continued offering me drinks, but since the night was getting late, I told them I had to get back, the hair on the back of my neck had also begun to rise. I made my way to the car and drove off, and that's how it started. Just so you know, the area I was cruising in was very familiar to me since I have been going through that particular suburb since I was younger. The streets are well lit, and it was relatively bustling with night joggers and cyclists, al fresco establishments, etc. It's safe to say that I knew the area like the back of my hand and that there was no way I was going to be lost. I knew I was making the right turns, the landscape looked familiar, but every time I turn right to where the highway should be, I get sent, back to where I started. After 30 or so minutes, I was already panicking. Why did that old man ask me to stay? Why are there no people on the streets? Eventually, about an hour or so, I arrived back where the three older men were. I was hesitant to go and talk to them, which I think was understandable, but seeing as they were the only people around, I manned up, which means I grabbed whatever I thought I could use as a weapon, in this case a tumbler. Dion ka muna iho, stay there, my child, the older man who asked me to stay earlier quipped. From the house, his wife, you wouldn't understand the relief I felt seeing another person aside from those three, came with a new shirt. They then asked me to take off the shirt I was wearing and burn it. I did it. Hell, if they asked me to dance to ward off evil spirits, I would have. They told me that the reason they were asking me to stay earlier was that when I arrived, they saw me with no head. In their province, they believed that this was a premonition of death and that the only way to avoid it was to make sure that nothing bad happens to me until my head becomes visible again. When I left the first time, I still had no head, so they were really scared that something bad would happen to me, but it looks like someone or something was watching over me that night and guided me back to the three old men. I left them during the wee hours of the morning. Way after the time they went to their respective homes, the wife also made me a coffee, which I thankfully accepted and transferred to my weapon or tumbler. On my way home, I passed through three vehicular accidents. Two of them were fatal. So I basically live in a small place like 10 kilometers, 6 miles, from a bigger city, and this thing happened like 4 to 5 years ago. 
our place is very calm, nothing happens here, it's just peaceful, but one time there were thieves who broke into houses and tried to steal some stuff. I have a kind of crazy best friend, and he was like, let's go out next night and catch these people. At this time, I was like 19, and he was like 17. My friend went to buy some flashlights, but a normal flashlight wasn't enough for him, so he bought a military one. We went out and checked the place we were walking for like 15 to 20 minutes when we found a street. I lived at this place for like 13 years, and I've never seen this street, and he is neither. Of course, we went in to check it because the street had no name or anything in it. It was weird because we went in and there were no houses, almost no road, it was just like huge grass to our left and right, i.e., like man-sized grass. We got to the end of the street, we looked right, and it was a dead end, which is weird because there are no dead ends in this place. We were talking, and he had his flashlight, and we were joking around, like, wouldn't it be crazy if we turned off the flashlight and somebody would chase us? He turned it off, and something or somebody started running towards us, we started running too. We got to the main street, and we were like, what was that? We went home, woke up, and immediately went to check it, and there was no street there where we checked. We went there several times by now, and we haven't found it yet. About a year ago, I moved into a new apartment with my family. Everything was fine until the 4th of July, a day I will never forget. I was taking a picture in my mirror, and I saw a little girl in the back. She was wearing a green and white sweatshirt, and she had blondish hair and a side ponytail. The thing is, her face was completely blurry and gray, something like I had seen years ago. After that incident, I had to delete it. The photo absolutely creeped me out. The thing is, after that, some weird things started to happen in my apartment. Pencils would slightly move when I was at my desk, my bed would creak a little, and my cat was acting very weird in my room. She started meowing in the corner of the room and staring as if something were in that corner. Recently, I decided to take a picture, and the weirdest thing happened. I zoomed into the picture, and there was a black demon face. It absolutely terrified me, and I deleted it. I'm so scared to take pictures in my apartment now, but I'm thinking of taking one in the night again to see if I can catch anything. Any more tips on what I should do to catch proof of this thing? Or get rid of it? Honestly, I tried holy water and everything, but with the recent picture, I don't think that thing is gone. I live in Brooklyn. My car needed an inspection, so I went to a shop in Red Hook, by the way, the best mechanic I've ever been to, but that's beside the point. I walk up the street to a bench to wait out my car inspection, and I decide to call my aunt, which I do frequently. I notice that Greenwood Cemetery is right up the street. Greenwood is a huge cemetery and is also home to the location of the Battle of Brooklyn, a Revolutionary War battle. It was the second most visited nature site in the 1800s and, at the turn of the century, second only to Niagara Falls. I've always wanted to go there, as it's beautiful and used as a public park. The guy calls me back about the car. I put my aunt on hold and was told my car would be ready in two hours. Cemetery, here I come. I walked around speaking to my aunt on the phone for about an hour, reading old graves aloud to her, and just marveling at how beautiful the cemetery actually is. No wonder, I say to her, that people pay $17,000 to be buried here. As the end of my two free hours winds down, I decide to get up from the bench I was sitting on at the top of one of the many hills. The best thing is I can see exactly how to get out of here, I say to my aunt as I make my way down the hill. I start complaining about how steep the hills are. She makes a joke about me not getting locked in and making sure the gates are still open, because this actually happened to someone she knew in the same cemetery. Suddenly, out of literally nowhere, there's a shushing sound, like someone is telling us to be quiet. Immediately after, hundreds of distorted voices, all unintelligible, spoke at the same time. To say I was shocked and confused is an understatement. Neither of us could hear each other anymore, just the distorted voices interrupted occasionally by a rather crisp and clear, shh, like someone was telling us to be quiet. I listened for a long time, thinking maybe it was cell phone interference. There were so many voices at the same time, and they were so distorted, so unearthly sounding, I'm getting chills thinking about it, that I would confidently say this was definitely not that kind of cell phone interference. I listened for at least two minutes, just trying to understand at least one voice, to no avail. Let me say, I'm a pretty big skeptic. But this was something I can't explain, something that rattled me pretty badly. When I was like, maybe 8 or 11, I can't really remember what age. I was chilling in my living room with my mom, watching TV. My living room is connected to the hallway, which is where my room is. So in the living room, you could see down the hallway a little bit. Well, anyway, I closed my door and sat down in the living room when I heard my door open. 
I wasn't tripping since sometimes my door opens by itself if I don't close it right. So I get up from the couch and re-close it this time, making sure it's closed right, and I sit back down and continue watching TV. Then maybe about 3-4 to four minutes later, it opens again, and I look at my mom, and I don't remember what she said, but I got up again to close it, but this time I look in my room to make sure my dad or someone inside wasn't messing with me. I check around, see nobody, and close the door tightly, pushing it back and forth to make sure it doesn't open. I walk back and sit down. About 3 minutes to 4 minutes later, my mom gets up to go smoke a cigarette outside, so I'm by myself watching TV in the living room. Then I hear my door open again. At this point, I'm really freaking out since I know I closed the door, right? So I get up and begin walking down my dark hallway, slowly looking at my door. When I got an arm length away, I reached out really slowly for the handle to close it again. When my hand was about to touch the handle, I saw a white hand and arm reach from my right to close the door for me. I was really confused and didn't know what to think. I thought it was my mom for some reason, so I called out mom. Then I heard her say something from behind me down the hallway, and then it hit me that what I saw wasn't my mom. My heart dropped, and it freaked me out. Let's just say I slept in the same bed with my mom that night. Myself and two friends went for a walk in our local forest. I tend to walk fast, so I walked ahead of my two friends. I got to a certain part of the forest, and, literally, from nowhere, I was struck with the most overwhelming feeling of terror. It was so strong that it literally stopped me mid-stride, as I said, I walk fast, so for anything to stop me mid-stride is a feat. I froze and could not move. I was terrified. There was nothing, and nobody else was around. Then I get what can only be described as a certainty in my head, it wouldn't be accurate to call it a voice, but rather an overwhelmingly strong knowing, that I needed to look to my left. I did that, there was still no one and nothing there, except for a big crack in the side of the rock face that basically made for a small cave. Whatever it was, I knew it was in that cave, but, physically, there was nothing to be seen. I am not easily freaked out. I can't impress on you how utterly terrified I was. And this was in the middle of the afternoon. Had the next part not happened, I could have dismissed this and thought little of it. But it happened, as I stood there, unable to move, one of my friends walked nonchalantly around the corner and immediately. Without me even having a chance to look at her or try to move, she stops dead in her tracks and says, Whoa! Bad energy off that cave. I try to stumble out some explanation of how I am feeling, but I can't. The brain literally scrambled from fear. A minute later, our male friend appears. Both of us women start trying to explain to him what has happened because he literally feels nothing. He approaches the cave to look in, and we two grown women are begging him not to get too close to it. I was actually on the verge of tears. But he feels absolutely nothing. He takes a look inside and reckons we're just both being a bit hysterical. It was the weirdest, weirdest thing. Whatever was in there was just gone in an instant the second he appeared. I was 13 or so years old, and I saw a shadow figure. I've seen things similar to that out of the corner of my eye just outside my room when my bedroom door is open, so I keep it closed all the time now. It got too creepy. My door has closed by itself before. Cupboards have been open, but sometimes things are in different spots than where I and my family put them. I've also had very creepy sleep paralysis, and I might make another post sometime about that. There's been nothing super freaky or violent, but this is the one that got me the most. I was home alone for about an hour and a half. My mom and sister had gone out somewhere, and it was a little later in the evening for me. It was around 10.30 or 11 o'clock, and I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth. I start out like I normally do, and I'm about halfway through. I spit my toothpaste out and look up in the mirror. On the wall behind me, I see a shadow figure slowly walk towards the shower, and I freak out and run outside and wait until my mom gets home. It was by far one of the most frightening things to happen in my life. I really want to try and communicate with it someday with some friends. See if it's good or evil. I'm sure if it were evil, there would have been more experiences, and it would seem more malicious and stuff, but I'm not sure. I come from a superstitious family, and throughout my life, I've had a few experiences that might be considered paranormal, especially when I was a kid, such as premonitions and weird dreams. About a month ago, my cousin and I went to the mall to get some lunch. It's a small mall in a small town, and the food court only has about six or seven food vendors. My favorite are the Turkish kebabs, so I ordered a kebab and sat down, while my cousin ordered Thai. The majority of the vendors are situated one next to the other, while there's one lonely kiosk in the center of the food court that sells Vietnamese food. My back was to the kebab shop and the other vendors, and I was facing the center of the food court with a clear view of the Vietnamese kiosk, while my cousin was opposite me. 
I was just eating and chatting with him, in between checking my phone, and behind him I could see the guy at the Vietnamese kiosk cooking some food, it looked like he was working by himself. A few minutes later, I looked up and saw that there was someone else with the man now behind the counter, a woman with long, dark hair standing with her back towards me. I didn't think anything of it and continued to eat my lunch and chat with my cousin. A while later, I looked back up at the kiosk, and the woman seemed to still be standing in the same position with her back towards me, as if she hadn't moved a muscle since the last time I looked up. Just as I noticed this, she slowly began to lower herself, like she was crouching down to grab something from behind the counter. I took notice because it was kind of creepy the way she lowered herself, but I continued to eat my lunch. Maybe 5 to 10 minutes later, I realized the woman hadn't come up from behind the counter yet, which, obviously, I thought was weird. Another 10 minutes or so after that, we finished our lunch, and the woman still hadn't resurfaced. I told my cousin, but he just thought I was BSing him and laughed at me. So we got up, packed our stuff up, and left, and as we were walking past the kiosk, I asked the guy what happened to the woman he was working with, to which he replied, woman? No woman, only me today. I freaked out, like, WTF? Anyways, I can't get it out of my head, it's easily the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me, at least as an adult, and I wanted to see what other people thought about it. Since I was a kid, I have had a reoccurring nightmare. But it was a bit different. Let me try to explain. I will be having a dream normally about me visiting a friend's house, or sometimes random places, I mean, it's always different, but then suddenly it will switch up. I'll tell them I need to grab something, or I'll need to check something out, I heard something, saw something, whatever. But then it happens. She appears. A terrifying ghost. Oddly, the same one my whole life since I was old enough to remember them, it's the same one, she will appear and chase me, or scream at me, or come quickly at me, and I wake up right before she gets me. Sometimes I have pain in the area she touches or scratches, and sometimes I bruise. A lot of times, it happens, and then I'm gravely ill. I will wake up with a cold, sweat, severe fever, and pneumonia one time. But she's always there. My significant other and I call her the lady in white, and I'm not sure if it's something I should be worried about or what, but I just always wanted to share this. I finally had the courage to do it. Last weekend, my friend and I went hiking in the Catskills, near Sundown Forest, Fio, and found this really creepy statue while ducking around in some caves. It has nails in its eyes and a noose around its neck. It looks like it might be old. I don't think it's been there very long, but it's weird because this cave was way off the trail. Someone had a fire in there not too long ago. The statue really wigged me out, but my buddy decided to take it home with him even though I told him not to. Everyone says that there are devil worshippers that come out here to sacrifice animals and do their spells and shit, so I didn't want anything to do with this thing. A couple days later, my friend calls me and tells me that he thinks the statue is haunted because it keeps moving from its spot and he keeps smelling weird stuff. He says he can't sleep at night because banging keeps waking him up. Now, last night, someone knocked on his door, but no one was there when he opened it, and he's super weirded out. He thinks he has a ghost because of the statue. It must just be a coincidence, but I think he's actually scared. Before we set things on fire, I wanted to see if anyone knew what it was. Anyone ever seen something like this or heard of a statue causing ghosts? It happened to me a few years ago, probably around mid-July of 2017. It must have been like 2 AM, I think, and I was in bed sleeping when all of a sudden I woke up. The room was completely dark except for some moonlight coming in through the window, and I got up to look for my phone and check the time. I turn my head towards the window, and in front of it, I see this black figure just standing there and occasionally moving its arm slightly, just like when you stand still and you, well, move your arms. I looked at it for about 5 seconds and then pretended to go back to sleep, covering my head with my blanket and going in a fetal position as I started to shake and eep. I peeked out of the blanket every 30 minutes or so to see if it was still there, and it kept standing where it was when I first saw it. Then, after like 4 hours of this SHT, I saw a light turning on in the corridor that brings me to my room, and I just rushed for it, thinking it was my dad getting ready to leave for work, thinking about it now, I don't remember seeing anyone and this is freaking me out. I stayed up for the rest of the night, sending messages to one of my friends on Discord, but he didn't believe me. This happened two more times over the span of about five months, and each time it got closer and closer to my bed. The second time was almost identical to the first, but it vanished after around an hour, and the third time, I kind of got used to seeing it because I knew it wouldn't hurt me, but it still scared me a lot. The scariest thing about this one encounter was that it was so close that I could hear it breathe, and it sounded like when you breathe with your mouth while showing your teeth, and it sounded like a really angry sigh. 
And no, it wasn't a hat man, it was just a figure, nothing horrible happened to me on the date following the events, and no, it wasn't sleep paralysis, I could move freely and as much as I wanted. I'll tell a couple. My first is from when I was about 7 or 8, when my parents bought their first house after moving from TX to Y. We had been staying with my grandma previously, so it was a big deal for the whole family. So soon after we moved in, my dad noticed an issue. My brother and I had our own bedroom we shared, he was much younger at the time, we are 4 years apart, me being the oldest. The problem was that the bedroom was always ice cold at night, sometimes during the day, but almost always after everyone went to bed. My dad tried putting the heat on high and adding a space heater, but nothing worked. My brother would wake up crying in the middle of the night. My dad ignored this, being an ex-military, he was a believer in discipline and not babying us. One night, he decided he couldn't stand the crying. He told me he went into our room, and it was again freezing. He picked up my brother to get him to calm down, and a rocking chair my mom kept in our room began to rock back and forth. He put my brother down, and it stopped. I picked him back up, and it started up again. This happened on and off for a few weeks. My dad decided to look at the place's history. It turns out an old woman had died in the house before we bought it. He was able to contact her daughter and find out she was very fond of her grandchildren, but she passed in her sleep, naturally, not long before we bought the place. My dad ended up sitting in a chair across from the rocking chair as it moved late one night and said he just spoke out loud about how we were loved, that the house had good people in it, that his children, my brother and I, were well taken care of, and that she could go be at rest and not worry about watching over us. He says that at that point, the rocking chair was still, and the room warmed again. My second took place when my family stayed in the UK for a month or so. We were in a nice cottage in Leeds, placed back in the hedgerows, far down a winding road. So one night, my brother and I are utterly lost, coming back from a pub, trying to navigate our little Fiat Stilo home to the cottage. We are getting increasingly worried as the back roads of England can be very confusing late at night. Of course, it is pitch black, other than the moonlight, as well. Suddenly, I see someone on the road with a black dog and a walking stick. He is dressed in farmer's clothes with a straw hat. We pull up to him and roll the window down. He looks at my brother and me, and before I can say anything, he says, cottage is that way, just a bit past the tree there. Don't worry, you're nearly there. Easy to get lost out here, I know. So I looked to where he was pointing and turned back. He is gone. I asked my brother where he went. My brother says, who? I tell him about the guy, and he says he thought I'd just stop to try and get my bearings and pull out a map. I ask if he is sure he didn't see anyone. He says no one was ever on the road or near the car. I drove down to the tree, and a half block later, we got to the entryway for the cottage. It still gives me goosebumps. I used to live in Arizona, right between a couple of mountains. One was called Superstition, with the associated rumors you'd expect, and the other was Red Mountain, which is a Yavapi Indian holy site and off-limits unless you have a permit. There are a decent amount of stories about skinwalkers and other nasty Native American beasties like the Hoofy that come out of the area. I've always had a fascination with those stories, but I was never scared of them. I spent a lot of time wandering around the desert and was used to seeing all manner of wildlife, including coyotes, mountain lions, javelinas, and various deer. As we frequently did, a couple of friends and I went camping one weekend. We picked a new spot along the Gila River, within close, but legal, distance of Red Mountain. We scouted it out a couple weeks before, and as far as anyone could tell, it was public land and perfectly legal for us to be on. Near the river is a nice clearing free of the ever-present jumping color. It was a beautiful night, a clear, warm, wonderful view of the Milky Way. We could hear frogs down at the river and the occasional yipping of the local coyote pack. Then, around 3 a.m., everything went quite well. You could almost feel the silence pressing down around you. We throw a couple extra logs on the fire and instinctively huddle around it. A couple minutes go by, and then, from across the river, we hear the sound of drums. No one has really ever been able to decide if there was one drum or two, but it sounded like a low, steady heartbeat. The sound abruptly cut off after 10 minutes or so, and we were pretty damn relieved. Then, we noticed the silence was the same. Only this time, it felt like we were being watched. From the other side of the fire, one sound kicks in. It's a snuffling, shuffling sound, exactly like a javelina rooting around for a snack. Now, javelinas are cute little pigs, ranging from 50 to 90 pounds or so. This one was not cute in any sense of the word. He was grizzled, ragged, and huge. At least 4 feet at the shoulder, at least 120 pounds and his eyes glowed red. 
I've never seen eyes like that. He seemed to inspect our campsite and looked at each and every one of us from across the fire. We were being assessed. I don't know for what. Suddenly, a mass of sap lit up in the fire, and when the sparks died down, he was gone. Slowly, the normal nighttime sound started up again, and we passed the rest of the night in relative peace and booked it out of there first thing in the morning. We never went back to that particular campsite again. It took a couple months before I felt comfortable outside at night. I eventually was able to go hiking on Red Mountain with a Yavapi guide, and we resumed our weekend camping trips. I never saw anything like that, Havelina, again. This is all 100% true. I used to deliver newspapers during the night, so I was accustomed to seeing plenty of planes and helicopters. I'm also a bit of a stargazer, so I like to look up at the sky while I brought papers to people's doors. I noticed these three lights in the sky one night. Red. There was nothing particularly interesting about them other than how it looked as though they were completely still. I didn't think anything of it at first, but I kept my eyes on it purely because I thought it was fascinating. Then it started to move forward ever so slightly, then moved back a little, and darted into the distance in a split second. I honestly have no words for how to properly explain what I saw, and I know you most likely won't believe me anyway. It looked as though it went through a portal. Almost like in the movies, where a ship warps into hyperspeed and leaves a little white trail behind it. That's what it looked like. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and it just completely disappeared in an instant. I honestly don't bring this up ever because I feel like no one will ever believe me. Now here's the crazy bit. A few months ago, about three months after I quit my job working as a newspaper correspondent, I was chilling and watching TV with my mom. There's a big window behind the couch where I'm sitting, and my mom is looking out, like she's seeing Danny DeVito ducking a unicorn out in the yard. I turned around and saw the same. Ducking. Lights in the sky. Again, it didn't really appear like it was moving, and I looked over to my mom, and I was like, what is it? And she told me that the red lights were previously white and that it had turned around instantly and turned into three red lights. It was sitting completely still, and out of nowhere, it just did this really random zigzag in the sky at speeds I have never seen before. It was like it zipped around and made some kind of U-turn, but it was so much faster than any plane or helicopter I've ever seen. I honestly can't put it into words. I actually saw it move this time. It looked like something straight from a cartoon. This one also completely disappeared. We both ran outside to look for it, but it was nowhere to be seen. It was also a clear night. This time, I knew I wasn't crazy because my mom and I both saw it. I only wish I had gotten it on video. But anyway, take with that what you will. You asked for something strange, and I still don't have an explanation for what I saw those nights. Our grandparents have this ancestral house that we used to spend the first week of summer vacation in. When we're there, we usually stay in the guest house because it is newer and more comfortable, the beds are new, there's hot and cold water, a big TV, etc. And frankly, the old house is also a bit scary, given that it's old and no one has really lived there for years. Only the caretakers are there the rest of the year, and they have their own little place on one side of the property, so they don't actually live in the old house. One time, us kids were playing. I happen to look in the direction of the old house, and I find my younger cousin standing on the second floor ledge. I immediately called for help. Eventually, we get him down safely. When we ask him how he got there, he has no memory of the whole thing. The last thing he remembers is that he was riding his bike. The next thing he knew, everyone was calling his name, panicking, and trying to get him down. We also couldn't figure out how he could have gotten there because he was around 7 or 8 at that time, and the ledge is on the second floor so there's no way he could reach it. The only way to get there is by using a ladder or through the library window. There was definitely no ladder nearby because the caretaker had to run to the garage to get the ladder. There is also no way he could have gone through the library because it is locked, and the window has been practically bolted shut because no one has opened it in years. We never figured out what happened. To this day, my cousin still has that hole in his memory, but he said he's had random dreams about a disenchanted voice coming from the library window calling his name. I'm 42. I've lived in many different places over the years. But I've experienced several inexplicable things in only one single house. We lived there when I was a young teen. There was always an overall off feeling to begin with. The energy just wasn't right. The first thing was that I came home from school. I came in through the back door, which was closest to my room. I went over to my dresser, and you know the old board games that use those tiny hourglass things as timers? Well, it's been on the dresser, and I looked down at it and it's flipped on its end with the sand running down. No one was home except one of my sisters, who was asleep on the couch out in the living room. One time, I was sitting on the toilet, 
and the toilet paper roll started rolling down. Not fast, but enough to catch my eye and make me notice. The third thing I remember is that I was in the other bathroom, my mother's bathroom, taking a bath. There was a radio in there, but it hadn't been plugged in, and there were no batteries in it. But it started making staticky noises. Now the biggest thing that happened. I had a friend over, and we were just hanging out and goofing off in my room. We were 14. All of a sudden, we see this purplish swoosh of light go from one side of the wall to underneath the bed. It was big, like one and a half feet by three feet long. We both whipped our heads at each other in silence. We then went and asked my little innocent four-year-old niece to go look under my bed and see if they saw anything. Lol. I know, but we were just teens. Anyway, I have no idea or explanation as to what is going on with that house. Over the years, I've always wanted to go and ask the people who live there if they've experienced anything odd. It's in my hometown, which is just a half hour away. Maybe I will someday. Last night, I was sitting on my bed doing some journaling. I usually have a movie going on my laptop beside me, but the movie I was watching last night had subtitles, so I paused it to watch after I'd finished with my stationery so I could focus on it. So besides the fish tanks water thing, my room was silent, and the house was in darkness. Anyway, I heard my name being said as clearly as day, though it was a loud whisper. I looked up, thinking it might be my daughter wanting to get my attention, but at the same moment, my young dog jumped off the bed and went crazy. She started barking, growling, and being super aggressive. She went searching the house for whatever it was that we both heard. My old dog came running into my room and was scared, though it might have been because of the young dog's barking. It took my dog about 15 minutes to finally calm down, which is very rare for her, but then she sat guard at the end of my bed until bedtime. I have to admit, it did freak me out a little. Granted, I was still able to turn on a horror movie after that, so it didn't terrify me too much. But what is going on? I am really starting to think I'm going mad, but with my puppy reacting as she did, I know she heard it too. So I'm not the only one hearing this or seeing other things that are happening. I am still perplexed about several things, but especially about the modem being unplugged and switched off, that is still the weirdest thing so far, as well as my closet door opening and closing on its own, that again made my dog growl and bark, and I have video of that. My mom suggested I had a micro sleep, but I am positive I was wide awake as I was sitting up and cutting up paper for my journal and was not tired, but it is another possibility to add, I guess. I saw a lot of scary and unexplainable SHT when I was a kid. But when I was 18, I went through a period of five months where the first Sunday of every month I would wake up at noon for a few seconds, and then the sleep paralysis would kick in. Shortly after that, the hat man would walk into my room. And the thing is, normally I can't sleep past 10 AM. It was just on this day that I would sleep till noon. During the encounters, I would always wake up for a quick second before noon, just enough to catch a glimpse of the clock at 1130 or something, but not be able to stay awake. It felt like I had taken so much Benadryl. The first time he came to my room, I woke up frozen and heard the door click gently and very, very light steps across my room, like if someone was trying to sneak around. I was already paralyzed at this point, but I was lying on my back, and when I opened my eyes, I could see him standing at the foot of my bed. He was skinny and tall, in a three-piece suit and a top hat. His face was like one of the drama masks, the happy one, not the sad one. Think slender man if you draw a big open mouth smiley face on him, he was also only semi-obvious, I could see through his legs and arms but his face and body were more saturated in a way. He stood there for a while. I was terrified and tried to ignore it. I'm used to having sleep paralysis, which I've had since I was a kid, so I've gotten really good at pulling myself out of it, and I never usually get the scary hallucinations with my sleep paralysis like some people do. And I'm good at controlling my dreams, so I haven't really had a nightmare since I was 10 because I could always tell myself it was a dream and go on to the next thing, so I haven't been scared of a dream for a long time. But this time I couldn't pull myself out of the paralysis, and I couldn't change the dream either, and the terror I felt was different than anything I felt before. So anyway, after standing there for a while, he crawled up from the foot of my bed. I could feel each step he took crawling up my bed, and I could see the blankets indenting. I felt the pressure of every step, but it wasn't as heavy as a human felt. He knew I couldn't move, and he knew I could see him there and that I was terrified. I kept my eyes closed, but somehow it was like I could still see through my eyelids. I've never felt sheer terror like that. He was basically on all fours on top of me, his face above mine. I could hear him laughing this hollow laugh. I don't know if I was really hearing it with my ears or if I was hearing it directly in my head. I don't know how long he was on top of me, but eventually I felt him crawl backwards off the bed and walk out of my room. I heard his footsteps leave the room, 
and the moment I heard the door click again, I was able to rip my torso off the bed. I tried to convince myself that I was dreaming, but it happened on the dot for five months straight. And then on the first Sunday of the sixth month, the hat man didn't come, but my very healthy 18-month-old cat just died for no reason later that day. Since then, I've never had another encounter or feeling of paranormal dread like that again. I've been living in an apartment in East Boston this past year. I'm moving out this month. I have never felt any sort of ghostly presence in there, and I have something of a sensitivity to that. Tonight I was home alone, cleaning. I thought to myself at one point something along the lines of wow, I'm so glad I haven't felt anything supernatural in this apartment. Two minutes later, as I'm vacuuming, the power goes out in half of my apartment. My living room, my room, my hall, and the porch are all dark. The sudden darkness and silence were very jarring, and I was suddenly extremely anxious. I had to go into the creepy basement to flip the breaker back. Once the lights were back on, I went back up to my apartment. I texted my girlfriend, who's down the cape with her family, to calm me down. When I told her the power cut out, she replied, whoa, that's really bizarre because we're sitting outside and a power line just burst. It looked like a firework. This freaked me out even more, and then the air started to get very heavy and oppressive, even though the AC was blasting. I was raised as a Catholic, so I started silently saying some protective prayers to try and feel better or calm down. As I'm saying these in my head, I hear a loud bang from the kitchen. The air started getting even thicker, and there was an extremely loud frequency buzzing in my ear. I only felt, semi, comfortable sitting in the chair with my back to the wall. Anytime I stood up, I literally felt like someone or something was lurking behind me. The hair on the back of my neck actually stood up several times. After about 15 minutes of this, I just decided to leave the apartment and go to my parents' house. As I was leaving and shutting off lights, I felt the something was continuing to lurk over my shoulder. I couldn't get out fast enough. I think whatever it was wanted to humble me a bit. Let me know that this is not really my apartment, and I was not alone. Not even in my thoughts. Last year, for a solid 2 to 3 months straight, I woke up between 2.30 and 3.45 every morning. Each experience was pretty much the same, I'd wake up with the feeling that I needed to get out of bed and would do so. I'd trudge around my apartment without really thinking, either getting water or whatever on autopilot. Then I'd blank out for a bit and snap to reality, standing at the sliding glass door to my balcony, staring into the dark field behind my apartment complex that kind of merges with a huge riverbed, where the water runs underground, to the west and stretches straight south for about half a mile. Every time I'd kind of shake myself awake, I'd get the sudden feeling that I was being watched. Sometimes the feeling came from the field, but every so often I'd sense the presence of something behind me in the darkened dining room. My roommate has a cat, and this cat never leaves his side when he's home. The kitty sleeps in his bed with him overnight and is never anywhere else when it's dark, unless it's a quick run to the litter box. But it never failed that each time I found myself staring into the field, Rumi's cat would be sitting next to me, staring unblinkingly up at me. The cat would never make a sound, which is also odd because the little darling never stops making a sound and the cat would sit there, planted in place, staring, until I went back to bed. Any other time I wake up at night, the cat is happily snuggled with my roommate and doesn't so much as come to greet me. It was hella weird and unsettling, and I also suffered a lot of intrusive thoughts and negative feelings during those months. Then, suddenly, it just stopped happening. My mood improved, the cat stopped staring at me, and things went back to normal. Now I can stare at the field without those feelings of being watched. To this day, I don't know what it was, but something was luring me out of bed every night, and the cat did not like it. When I was a teenager, I would sneak out to drink with friends. Eventually we started smoking weed, and it never really worked on me. I literally wouldn't feel high at all, but I'd still smoke just for fun. This one time I went out with my friend, she handed me a joint and left me alone, sitting on top of a short wall. I didn't mind, I just sat there, staring at the night sky, smoking, and waiting for something to happen. And then, a beautiful girl about my age walks over and sits beside me. I didn't know her, and she didn't introduce herself. She just asked, can you blow it into me? I was confused, so I asked her, do you mean? Do you want to hit? And she said, no, I want you to blow the smoke to me so I can breathe it in. I was even more confused, but I agreed anyway. I smoked it in, we got really close to each other, lips almost touching, and as if I were blowing out a candle, I delicately blew out the smoke to her as she breathed it in. We looked deeply into each other's eyes. And then she just said, thank you and left, breaking all the tension between us. After a few minutes, I got really, really high for the first time in my life, 
and I have always been able to get high since. I'm not sure what to think about any of this. When I was about 10, I decided to rearrange some of my bedroom. That night, as I lay in bed, I saw an eerie shadow on the ceiling, it was an attic room with a sloping ceiling, that I swear to God looked exactly like the outline of a Victorian man holding a lantern. He had an old-fashioned hat on, and I remember even his coat collar being clear. Well, I was completely freaked out, but I did understand that shadows are caused by objects blocking light, etc. So in order to calm myself down, I tried to find the source of the shadow. Well, I moved some things and tried all sorts of things to change the light coming in from the window, but I could not, for the life of me, alter this shadow in any way. Still freaked out, I hid under the covers, always the safest place, and eventually went to sleep. I figured it was my active imagination, but the next night, same again. The following day, I put my bedroom back the way it was. Yes, I guess it was probably something to do with the shadows of the furniture somehow. But it's a fact that I couldn't make it change at all. In 2012, when I was 12 years old, I went for a walk with my dog because my mom said I had to go out with the dog. It was pretty late, probably 5 or 6 pm I grabbed the dog leash, put it on his head, and went out. It was pretty quiet and dark, so I was kind of scared already. No one was around, and there were no cars or whatever. The moon was shining pretty brightly, and I thought that it was beautiful. Then I heard a weird noise, kind of like a whistle. I turned around, but there was nothing there. I turned back and walked a bit faster, because I didn't know what or who it was. I looked back at the moon, and suddenly it flashed in my eyes. I heard very, very loud bass, and the moon got like 50 times bigger. I could exactly see the crater of it, and it fell on my back. I screamed and started crying because I didn't know what just happened or how this even happened. My dog started barking and then suddenly went silent. I looked after him, and he was just watching me. I went, stood up, and ran back, crying. I told my mother what happened, but she didn't believe me and thought I just didn't want to go with the dog. I laid down in bed and didn't know what to do. I was whining about this because I tried to explain it to me, but I just didn't know, and I still don't know. I went to a doctor, and he said that everything was fine with me. There's nothing wrong with my psyche or anything. I still don't know how this happened or what this was. If anyone knows how this happens or what this was, please explain it to me. My Beck Encounters I've had two encounters with them. The first time was two years ago or so, in a gas station parking lot off of Highway 58 in Tennessee, at like 3 or 4 in the morning. My friend had parked towards the far end of the lot around the side of the building. I was sitting on the passenger side of my friend's car, waiting for him to come out of the store after buying his cigarettes. I was fairly relaxed, enjoying the radio, and then I heard a knock on the window. I looked over, and there was a boy, he looked about 12, and he was wearing a grey hoodie with his hood pulled up. I cracked the window and asked him what he wanted, and he responded, can I borrow your phone? I wasn't going to let some strange kid use my phone, so I told him that I was sure they'd let him use the one inside the store. He kept insisting on it, though, and it was the weirdest thing because the longer he stood there, the more unsettled and scared I started to feel. I had rolled up the window by this point, and he had become less aggressive but more insistent. That's when I saw his eyes. His hood slipped back because of his movements, and the only way I can describe the feeling of looking into those eyes is primal fear. That's about the time he quickly moved to the nearby tree line, and a few seconds later, my friend got into the car. He said I was pale as a ghost and asked me what was wrong. At the time, I had no idea what the hell that was all about and had trouble describing it all to him. He looked at me strangely and said he didn't see the kid at all. That really got to me. So when I got home, I couldn't sleep and found out exactly what I had encountered. The second encounter happened shortly after, between my roommate and my house. This was about three and a half weeks ago. I'm a night owl, so I'm up at pretty ridiculous times of night a lot of the time and I was up at around 3 30 ish in the morning, yet again, and watching videos. Then I hear a knock on the front door. I would have normally just avoided a knock on the door at that time of night, but my roommate's girlfriend had left only about 20 minutes prior, so I assumed it was her having forgotten something, it wouldn't have been the first time. So I went to the door and cracked it a bit to look outside, and there were these three kids. One looked to be around a 16-year-old girl, the other two were little boys who appeared to be 6 and 10, respectively. They wouldn't look directly at me, and they held their heads at a downward angle. The porch light cast a pretty heavy shadow over their features, so what they were was again obscured. I hadn't forgotten about my previous encounter, but I didn't know any of the neighborhood yet and couldn't just assume Beck when it could have been desperation standing at my doorstep. I opened the door a bit more, and before I could ask what they were after, the girl said, can we come in to use your phone? I told her I could fetch it and let her use it, but again, 
She asked to come inside. It was as if I hadn't said anything at all, and her insistence grew, just like last time. She stepped from the front walk to the bottom step of my stoop and looked up at me. I saw those eyes again, slammed the door, and went back to the living room, a good distance away from the front door. I heard a few more knocks over the following few minutes, growing more aggressive with each volley until they stopped. I didn't dare get close to the door or windows again until sunrise. I've since installed security cameras around the perimeter of the house, and if they come back, I'll post the footage. So there you have it. Those were the two times I've had encounters with Beck. Has anyone else here had any run-ins with these things?